Hello and welcome to episode 13 of Let's Play the Banner Saga. We just uh, picked up Sigbjorn from Reinevik and a bunch of other people. So we got supplies for three days, two days now. Ugh, what did I do? Sigbjorn wakes up in a pool of his own sick. Why am I surrounded by small people? The other clansmen let him sleep off his drunken stupor on the ground, and this morning he's paying the price. Help him recover. Reluctantly, your clansmen offer any food and drink they can scrounge together for the moaning war. When one offers thin meat, he pushes it away. In fact, take this away from me, he says, and then you his massive meat stein. Eventually, Sigbjorn comes to you. I won't get into details, he says. I was surprised to bring those casks from Reinevik back to Borsgarn. I drank maybe half, by accident. Point is, Sigbjorn continues, you don't tell anybody what happened, and I won't tell anyone the, about the meat you got, okay? Trust me on this one. You agree and get back to travel. Treasure hunter achievement. <laughs> You're not a blessing. A group of men with broad shoulders and thick cloaks approach the caravan. They might be outlaws you hear nearby, and the idea quickly ripples through the clansmen. One of the strangers approaches, saying, We've run out of food, any help would be welcome. His hard eyes reveal nothing of his motivations. Ask them how they came to be here. The men get nervous and reveal sturdy weapons. Your warriors step forward until the leader holds out a hand, saying loudly, The last group to ask us questions tried to kill us. Try it. Let's keep this simple, will you help us or not? Fight with us and earn your food. The men look surprised by your offer. In short order, they join the caravan and start sharing tales and drinks. Unfortunately, it's less than a day later that you discover they vanished along with a sizable portion of your supplies. Oh shit. Well, the alternative was to fight them, so... Oh man, there are gonna be lots of people starving. More supplies missing, the woman by a wagon says to you. And look, tracks! Right here they look like children footprint, but my husband and I followed them into the wilderness away. They meet up with some adult tracks, not telling how many. Send out scouts. We round up some volunteers who depart quietly. They return that evening with reports of a few tracks that ultimately lead nowhere. Someone may be trying to hide their tracks, but you don't have time to continue the search. Okay, we're almost at Borsgard, so... The sprawl of Borsgard comes into view. A city of contrasting rich and poor, opportunity and gamble. Our best hope for salvation, or our graves. The Slayer and the Slain, Chapter 7 Finally, you arrive at Borsgard, where the walls stretch for miles in both directions and are littered with the bodies of dredge, varl and men. Excuse the mess, shouts a voice from above the gates. Looking up, you spy a striking varl, his face ratted with matted black hair, movement at the gates catches your eyes. Dredge are still banging on the door gates. Without luck, let us in, you shout. Sigibjorn pushes past. 
I won't be hearing the end of this for a while, he says, before yelling. Open up, Bolverk. They dug me out of Rhinevik. You hear a laugh echoing on the wind as the doors creak. A dozen armed men led by the massive worm make quick work of the dredge and usher you into the city. You may be interested to know they brought a mender. You didn't go you didn't go to get a mender. Where's the meat? Sigbjorn shrugs apologetically. I guess the mender will do. Either we've got a chance now, or we're completely screwed. I'm Rook. We've come a long ways. Some as far as Skogger. Are you in charge here? In charge of the governor, I suppose. Listen, if you have something to tell him, say it now. Otherwise, you're on your own. I don't care where you go, but stirring up trouble is probably the only reason you'll see me again. It won't be to talk. Mender, come along. We're going to see the governor. Bulwark and Singbjorn leave with Ivan, who goes willingly, signaling that it's that he's fine. Fine. This is just like Frostfella all over again. This is nothing like Frostfella. The one in Bearskin is probably leading the Ravens. Ravens? Is that good or bad? It depends on who they are working for. Hopefully it really is the governor and not someone trying to strong arm their way into his seat. I guess we wait for Ivan to tell us. If he comes back. I'm not worried about Ivan. I'm worried about the army of refugees we brought who don't belong here. You're probably right. Nobody ever uttered a nice thing about Borsgard. So what now? We ought to go to the docks and see what our options are, in case we need to leave quickly. Did you notice the city guards when we came in? What guards? I have a feeling the ravens are all they've got left. Something serious went down. And when Bellower gets here, he's going to walk right through this place without even breaking his stride. Let's keep that to ourselves for now. So, the docks. Look at the market because we needed some food. One renown gets one food. Oh my god, we're getting ripped off. Oh my god, this is painful. <laughs> this is so painful. Spend all my renown just to get some supplies. Oh, we literally lost Sigbjorn. Krummer. Oh. Who's out then? Who do we lose? We can promote Ivor. Let's look, have a look at all those trinkets that we got. Knockback on strength, greater than 3. Plus 1 strength. Dunder's hand, according to mid, 3 strength. 2 will at rest. Two 
break. Two arm, two strength. Three break. But we don't have anybody at level five. So that doesn't really matter. We can bring Ivor to four though. Or Gunnolf to five. So he can't increase in break, we can get some exertion, that's good. Why is he using three break at the moment? So we're gonna replace that with strength. And then at some point <laughs> we need to get Ivor to level 4 as well. So we will be up to 19 then, 19 strength. I'm gonna have to starve for a couple of days. When you get to the docks your heart sinks in. Not a long ship to be seen, aside from wrecks. Bodies float in the water. Buildings are trashed and boarded up. What happened here? murmurs Alad. They're all gone, says Ivan, approaching alone. I see you had the same thought as me. Ivan, you're okay. I'm fine. It wasn't a lie. The governor is here. He's in hiding. Why? Since the dredge started appearing on anyone with a ship and a half bit left long ago, long ago, people can't live by foot. Foot is scarce. The markets are bare. Ports guard is a fire cake, waiting for someone to tip it over. So the governor's paying the ravens to protect him against his own people. And keep the peace, so to speak. It's more like a massacre anytime there's a hint of an uprising. Where does that leave us? I... I promised him Mender's protection in Arbrang. I don't think he's very popular here. They're going to start tearing this place down to build new ships. We can ride to Orms, Orms, Ormsa River all the way to the capital. Leaving another perfectly good city behind. How long will it take to build new ships? Hold on, what happens to the people living in Boerskarn? It's the best I could do on it. He thought it could take as long as a month. You don't usually make ships out of scrap lumber. As soon as people figure out what's going on, there is going to be riots in the street. A month? Why bother? Bellaru will be here within the week, if not sooner. I'm open to suggestions. Gods be damned, is there no end to this? Ivor roars in frustration, leaving you standing by the docks. Alet gives you a worried look before chasing after him. Ivan, what do we do about Bellower? Ivan says nothing for a moment. I don't know. You find Ivor standing on the city walls, overlooking the fields outside. Dredge are keeping their distance, but continue to gather. I'm okay, Rook. 
Ira cuts off before you can say anything. You know he's been through worse. It just feels like someone should cut us a break every now and then. If we want to be standing a month from now, we're going to have to be prepared. <sighs> what did you have in mind? What if we just leave on foot? What did you have in mind? First off, our clansmen need a place to stay. They'll get torn to pieces out in the street. I'll keep an eye on the dredge up here. If they break through the walls, we're done for. So we'll have to keep them back. Could always use a hand with that. We need to know who's controlling what and make sure we gotta get our cut. Food's going to become scarce. And when they start building those ships, we're going to have to keep people away. What a damn mess. I'll do what I can. Ivor explains. I'm leading attacks with Ivor and every time the dreads get too close to the gates. Listen, we're going to lose fighters and Varl every day like this. I don't need to tell you what happens if nobody is manning this wall. We could always use help. You consider what you want to do knowing that any of these tasks will likely take a full day. Find a safe place for the caravan to stay, join Ivor defending the walls, find a source of supplies, try to get some rest, let's try to get some supplies. I checked around, Outleaf tells you, and nobody has food, or they won't part with it for a fair price and our medicine has been gone for days. They're either gouging the prices, or it's just plain gone. She doesn't say it, but you can tell this is going to be a serious problem. Do we really want to deal with the ravens? Yeah, none of these options are good. I guess I'm gonna have to talk to the ravens. You find the massive leader of the Varl along the docks, where they are doing their best to keep a growing number of people in check while the boats are being constructed. You question him about food supplies. Should have brought your own, he says. I can't go giving out to every person in Bozgard. I'd kill every last bastard in the city before some good meat, though. This place has been dry for weeks. Threaten him for holding out, remind him innocent people will starve. Offer the meat you picked up in Reinevik. I guess we're doing that. Let me get this straight, says Bolrug. You happen to come through Reinevik with Sigmbjorn in tow with plenty of meat to go around, is that right? You hesitate for a little too long. I'll murder that motherless yox. Grausberg, as he turns to leave gr grumbles, bring the barrels and we'll make a trade. The caravan protests when you tell them to deal with, with the mate, but when you return with more supplies than you expected, the complaints vanish. Okay. We're talking to Ivor again. Ivor points out the dredge along the wall. There's a lot more of them, and they're getting braver. We lost a fair number of fighters since yesterday. We could use your help if nobody's left to defend the walls. Uh, let's put Krummer in charge of the. Warriors? <laughs> I don't know. What's the downside of that? Are we going to lose Gromer then? Alright, let's join. We've been a little bit more aggressively lately. 
We've been a little more aggressive lately, says Ivor. With their numbers going up, they don't talk us, take us serious unless we're taking out two for every one of what we lose. We lose. So Gunnolf, Krummer, Rook, Ejo, Ivan. I'm considering uh, putting Ivan closer up because if they start pounding on one, then I can get their armor up quicker. Maybe we do it like that. To battle. Why are we fighting in front of the gate? <laughs> okay, no questions. Alright, we need to be careful with that one. Hiver is first. for that. <laughs> oh, maybe I should have. No, I could only use two, right? So I couldn't have killed them. Well, that sucks. Stay out of that. Oh, damn it, I wish then you could select like an enemy and uh, a friend and then forward at the same time. If I go over there... No. If I go over there, it's not good. Can he actually move there? I think we're just going... Over here. Okay. Cromer has two willpower. Actually, I should have put uh, Gunnolf on this guy, right? No, um, that was a mistake. So, who's next? That one. 
How the hell did he hit us with two? He used will one willpower. There, I think, to be able to have. If I put over here, I'm not going to be able to hit him. We hit him for three, then we kind of render him useless, right? <laughs> what? Four armor? All right, Ivan. <laughs> You're up, dude. So rank 3 restores armor up to half of Amanda's current willpower plus 2. So that's more than enough. Yeah. Alright, it's getting closer. to do with Crummer though. It's gonna have to go around. Crummer around and then we can bring Gunalf here. Alright, we need to get the hell out of here. So we could go and kill that guy, or smash and break this guy, and then we have two possible guys to pick up this guy with freaking sound of control. Shatterstone explodes, causing two strength damage, but. Two bombs are thrown, exploding in a five tile area around a uh, five tile area on the next turn. Five tile area, what the hell does that mean? Let's do this because now we're not using any willpower. Okay, it did damage that guy. Nice. So we can get Gunnolf over here. Oh my god, let's put Gunnolf over here. We do Tempest. Ho ho ho! Go, Gunnar! Oh man, we can... We can just kill any of these. Normal strength damage to four adjacent enemies going clockwise. So normal strength is at 19. Dead. 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 <laughs> Alright, I wanna see this. Oh. <laughs> Good enough, you bastard. <laughs> 
Alright, we're gonna have to pick him up, right? Uh, we can deal... We can bring it down to 14. Which is probably what we should be doing. And then block him. Like this. Yeah. Okay, Ivor is taking a bit of a beating here, but... shouldn't worry about those maybe. So who's next? That one and then Ivan and then the big guy. But we can't really take down his health any further I feel. Okay. He cannot get to us though. I need to leave some room for Gunnolf to get through here. So I think we're just staying where we are. Remove some armor. Attack zero. <laughs> Unless we use the lightning, and even that is not really. So that's not really an option. I think we're just mending either, right? because I remove here then I cannot get him with um, Gunolf anymore all right I guess we're hitting this guy right that's fine a little yeah that's just fine right
Deflected, 20 dodge strength, 20%, one move, one will per kill. Not sure about that. This is bad, says Ivan. As Ivor points across the battlefield, Aside from the fact that we're up to our necks in dredge, a stone singer showed up. If we don't deal with it, this wall will come down by the end of the day. Dad, there's a riot at the docks. Atlet runs up to you out of breath. They're trying to smash up the boats when you calm her down. She says that the ravens are there, but she's worried that things could get out of hand. I want to do both of these. <laughs> Damn it. Tough choices, man. Tough choices. Let me just get some rest. <laughs> I'll sleep on it. Oh, seems like a bad idea. Find a safe place for the caravan to stay. I'm gonna have to swim with crew marine, right? Kruma, you shout, calling around the war leader. This is your expertise, are you willing? Kruma is more than happy to switch off leading the charge, giving Ivor a break between fights. He spends the rest of the day showing you complex war strategies to reduce losses. We lost 35 fighters, the war are almost dead. This morning, says Ivor, I saw him bellowers here with the number of losses we're taking. I'm sure it won't be long now. Ivan leans silently on his staff nearby. One of your clansmen comes to you out of breath. Brook, he says. Things are real bad. Look, there's nothing you can do at this point, but a lot of the caravan has been robbed, killed, just disappeared. Those of us just left are gonna split up and hide while we can. Wanted you to know in case we somehow pull through this. He runs off clearly distressed. You grimace, wondering if this could have played out another way. You consider what you n want to do now, knowing that any of these tasks will likely take a full day. Or you're gonna have to look at the rides at the docks. When you get down to the docks, it's pandemonium. Few works on the ships now, as the ravens stand over bodies of people, while the huge crowd roars in anger. Bulwark's axes are covered in blood. What happened, you shout, pushing your way through the rioters. What do you think would happen? responds Bolver coolly. Didn't take them long to figure out we were building ships right under their noses, and they can't have one. You're gonna lead, lend a hand or just stand around? Haha, <laughs> leave the fighting to the ravens. Can we actually calm people down? Is that even an option?
can I have my head? Let's get on the roof and fire some arrows. I mean, it sucks, but these people are not gonna calm down. Your head tells you this is very wrong, but you push the taunt aside and start taking out visible targets. One falls, then two, three, four. Once they notice, the rioters are terrified that any of them could be sniped next and scatter. Nice work, shouts Bulwark. We'll call you the next time we got a riot down here. You sit in quiet for a long time, just trying to catch your breath. You've killed before, but not like this. Oh, was he there before? I didn't notice that. Damn it! I was so focused on the city. <laughs> Ivor, you begin. Can we really keep this up? Ivor looks like he hasn't slept for days. We've lost a lot of fighters, he mumbles. The weight of the situation is crushing. Then, from far in the distance, you hear a horn. Dredge don't use horns, it occurs to you. Ivan appears to you at your side just as long as... Just as a long caravan of people coming to you. Dredge turning to attack them. Who is that, you ask? It can't be, says Ivan. He runs towards the gate, shouting. You see that banner? It's Haken! As you wonder how they got here, the gates are, are heaved open and you charge onto the field, clearing a path through Dredge. I think we're going in the same way as before. No, we don't have enough renown to upgrade anybody. So... We could use her to snipe some uh, armor off some of these guys. Kind of felt like Ivan was, uh, Ijil was unnecessary. Like he wasn't really doing all that much. Except taking blows. The problem is, if she gets sniped by ranged, she's gonna go down fast. I don't know. It just feels like we could use one more ranged character instead of all the melee. So we can either give her two will at rest or one arm, one strength, one will. I don't think we'll be resting a lot. battle. Ho 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 ho. Three big guys. Oh my god. This is gonna be a massacre. So can we see how far she can shoot? No, of course not. Bird of Prey, fire arrows at a greater range with 100% chance of hit. Mm. 
bonus strength damage when stationary. So we need Ivor to rush in and smack this guy in the face. And second one is Gunov. I don't think Gunov can get there. Ivor still has willpower, so put Gunov there. Ivor first, using willpower. Feel like he should be able to get there. Even now, it's going to be painful. And then we smack him with Gunolf. Um, Rook over there and Krummer over here, maybe. I don't know how we're going to deal with that. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Ah, so. oh, we can't get far enough. Okay, I'm gonna have to do this, I think. I hope that can, Gunov can go around. Can hit him for three, which would render him quite useless actually. And if we don't remove armor, Gunov can still hit him for three. Maybe if we use willpower, so we can hit him for eight, so we can't kill him. If we remove the armor, then it's just dead, right? Maybe I shouldn't be using willpower then. Uh, still four left. We won't be able to do four damage with either of those. So. He's kind of not a threat at the moment, right? Eleven. So his real threat is that knockback that he can do. Shield slam, yeah. Let's not use any willpower, I feel. to get this guy out of the way. So maybe we shoot for armor and then Ivan to restore his armor. 
and then we use her to finish him off. I gotta be careful here because I still want to be able to move with Ivor. So I'm kind of hoping that she can get to him no matter what. If we hit him like that, it's not gonna kill him. If we hit him with 4, then it's going down to 4. Now we can do... 6 maybe, with her. So what's better? Doing 5, and then 4. Four and six. Okay. I kind of hope that these guys get in the way. Oh, she's got the same range as Rook. That's quite disappointing. It's only when you use Bird of Prey that she can shoot farther away. But then you use one uh, willpower to do so. Bird of Prey, fire arrows at a greater range with 100% chance to hit range 7000, but it doesn't say how much it's gonna hit for a 1, 6. We could also kill this guy, maybe? No, we can't. Ivor is next, so Ivor is gonna hit on that one. And then we can move Gin gun off a little way maybe. Or are we going to we can move Gunolf closer maybe? Let Gunolf hit this guy. And while we're still out of range of that guy, yeah, okay. Somehow we need to get Kroomer in there. So when is this the big guy? Anytime soon, it seems. So we could get Krumer in there, remove some armor. Let's do this first. Alright, we're gonna have to use one willpower, it seems. Could use Tempest on these guys. No, 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 no. I still don't really understand why this double move is even in the game. What's the point of that? Let's 
So if we use Tempest, we're gonna use one willpower. And how it doesn't say for how much we're gonna hit this guy. Normal strength. So eight. Or we could just hit him for ten. But then we open him up to this guy, I think. So Tempest seems like the best way to do it. We could even do one more. It doesn't say how much damage we're doing. Seventeen probably. So eight, so that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Krummer. He has willpower but he cannot use it for some reason. See, this is what I don't understand. Did he throw some debuff on me? Sunstrike. Ah, okay. This blinding effect prevents the use of willpower. Okay. So if we uh, go and hit that guy, then we open ourselves up to this one. Unless he moves... Like run, run several times a night, so that's a huge risk. I am not willing to take that. Kill this guy and no, we can't run. Seven. So we need to stay out of this guy's way. Not too far. Okay, it's no good. So if I move here, then Ivor can move in. I could have just rested, but um, yeah, we need to open this up a little bit. Okay. get to that. Oh, we cannot hit that guy, right? Uh, we can remove armor of this, one of these. Not that it really matters.
can't hit him or what? Damn it. I haven't... I don't really need to repair anybody. So maybe we just go for the lightning strike then. Oof. That does not seem like a possibility to a six. And we have to move all the way to the here. Two. And there is no diagonal. We could just rest, get some willpower back, maybe. Is that gonna give us one extra willpower? useless as well. So bird of prey that's two, four, six, seven. Oh we need will power for that. Two, five, six, seven. to be here or to hit that guy Ivor is next but I don't think Ivor can get there yeah. Just when we were about to do the whole shebang. This guy coming in at us. So let's remove as much armor as we can. to do with you so the big guy can come to us it's not that good probably shoot this guy so
Okay. It's going good so far. Going very good. Well, that wasn't so good. Sell anything. <laughs> Is there a way we can prevent it now? what to do. They're uh, picking on Gunnolf. <laughs> do something, Ivor. kill him most likely we can give him one Oh, it's not gonna hit them. Can't hit them. Okay, never mind.
enter pillage. Except for Gunnold getting injured. <laughs> Juno! I wasn't sure that I'd ever see you again, Ivan. She smiles and they embrace. Ivan is completely taken aback, as though he doesn't dare believe it she's real. I'm sorry, I couldn't make it to Sickle Home. I ran into problems. Problems is putting it lightly. There's a mile wide canyon practically splitting the world in two over those hills. I couldn't find a place to cross. Worse, the dredger practically falling out of it like blood from a wound. They're not coming from the north anymore. They're everywhere. We noticed. Glad to see you made it out alive, Ingvar. I take it the others didn't. Hagen becomes quiet, then he motions toward Juno. She got across somehow, found her out of the cold for a second time since leaving Strand. We need every axe we can get right now. Bellower is here. God's be damned. I thought I was free of that menace. I will deal with Bellower. Come on, no need to tempt him by standing out here. Interesting, interesting. Haken's caravan enters the city, fighting off waves of dredge as they go. To your relief, hundreds of skilled warriors are now safely in Borsgad. Borsgad. 300 supplies, whoa! Haken joins you with his personal bodyguard, Mogur. Behind him, the prince, Ludin, and his entourage are in tow. To though looking less than pleased to be here. I have one last trip to make. I need this one to come with me, she says, pointing to you. I'm sorry, Ivan. You must wait for me one last time. Do not let the city fall before I return. I takes everything within Ivan's power to hold back, but he does. She turns to you. Rook, come with me. We'll return in two days, maybe less if you're as quick as you look. Tell anyone who needs to know. Where? Wh why? Not far, says Juno. She pauses, and something shifts in your vision. For just a moment. I know it's hard, she says, her voice filling your head. And you've already been through a lot. As she speaks again, to the rest of the world melts away. But you're needed. You can't find the words to argue. You don't remember leaving the city, but here you are, walking through unfamiliar ground behind Juno. You're alone, aside from hundreds of dredge, who are all facing towards an enormous stone ahead. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. I guess we're facing one of the menders or what? Or is it going to be? Yeah, it's going to be one of those. Okay. And um, what the hell that is? We are the Godstone of Strauss. You glance nervously around, but the dredge didn't seem to hear her. It's okay, you can speak, softly. 
Is this where you're going to sacrifice me? <laughs> Juno smiles. What could have been come across as a profoundly creepy look? Sincere instead. No, the dredge cannot see us. To be more precise, they can't see us, but I've convinced them to be unconcerned. I can understand your apprehension, though. What are we doing out here? Do you know of the god's straps? Few know this stone exists, even amongst those who have lived their whole life in Boar's Guard. While Dengler deals in fortune, Strauss taught men the value of trade in different way. In a different way, he showed them it has consequence. Two sides of the same coin. See the silver in the stone. The gales up here were away to the stone, away the stone, but the metal remains. We need a piece of hidden silver. The god Strauss is rotted with imagery of silver weapons. The myths say he traded these weapons to the gods and they used them to kill each other. Those who seek out the stone call him the god of trade. The Mendes call him the god of secrets. He was both. Who are you? I wish we had time for a proper introduction. My name is Juno. I am the Mender Council. I'm on the Mender Council. You've met Ivan, my apprentice. How are you doing these things, controlling mines? I thought Menders built things and healed wounds. You are right, Menders do taste things. Some of us still practice the teachings given to the Loom Mother's first creations. We are called Valka. I believe I'm the only one who can influence others' mind. Then why not take control of Balor? I learned to tell them to heal minds, not control them, though even some Valka have trouble believing this. Taking control of Balor is the difference between convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear, starving bear to stop being hungry. As convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear to stop being hungry. Okay. The truth is, we're rarely a match for the Sunder anymore. Our advantage is that we can train more Valka. It is also our weakness. The Valka pass on and lose their knowledge, while the Sunder simply grow older and more powerful. Bellor is both immortal and beyond my influence, to a point. Then how do we stop him? The God of Secrets will play a part, as you will, as will you. Why are we surrounded by Dredge? They seem to be drawn to the Godstone. There are many things we don't know about Straps. Maybe they see him as a patron, or oh, it is an attraction they cannot explain. The Straps have something to do with the Serpent in Anartov? Ooh, what's that thing? I cannot say. Can't? I have my suspicions, but until I had more time at the Mender Libraries, it would have been unwise to speculate. For all knowledge, it has always seemed as though we know little. Imagine how, it f how the rest of us feel. On the contrary, the less people know, the more certain they tend to be. Oh, that's very true. <laughs> That's some profound wisdom right there. Wisdom right there. Juno waits patiently for your reply. Why did you pick me? Why didn't you pick Ivan or Haken? You don't even know me. I apologize for putting you in danger. Ivan must keep Borsgard from falling while we're here away. And if something goes wrong here, I need to be certain that one of us makes it back alive. I saw the thoughts of each person when I arrived at Borsgard. You were the only one I knew would return. What do you mean? You would find your way back to Alette, no matter what. Juno waits patiently for your reply. 
Let's get what we need to do, what we need, and go. Indeed, you'll need to dislodge at least a fistful of the metal. We'll forge it into an arrow to slay Balawa. Wait, after everything you've told me, make a magic arrow to shoot Balawa? That's all it takes? Why didn't you do that a long time ago? Juno gets a far away look in her eyes. No, that's not all it takes. What I tell you now must not be repeated. The arrow will not kill Balor, even where it to strike is his heart. He has no physical weakness. But it was so so doubt so doubt in his mind. When it pierces him, it will help him to believe that he is dying. To the rest of you will convince him of it with sword and axe. Everyone who fights at your side must believe it to be true. You're going to trick him into thinking he's dead. This is the most insane. He really can't be killed? No, some, uh, someday he will be awakened and realize he's not dead. I imagine he will be quite upset. <laughs> First he must make the arrow focus on the task at hand. She looks knowingly at the godstone, waiting for you to start climbing. Rook, I am not certain how the dredge will react when you do this. And behind us is a sudden drop. So be careful. Because it's turning out to be an extra long episode, but okay. Approaching the back of the stone, you start to climb, looking for a loose piece of silver vein. Even without looking out on the dredge, you can feel sinister face watching you closely, held back only by Juno's influence. Panic races through your blood. Try to quickly wrench out the nearest chunk, climb higher where it may be easier to remove. Go back and tell Juno we can't do it. Ah, let's climb higher. As you climb, you can't help but notice the stony masks of dredge lined up before the godstone, like worshippers before an idol. Just a glimpse nearly immobilizes you. Your hand rests on a piece of silver that comes away easily. The dredge do not react. Look for another piece. While you are here, you glance quickly around to see if there is any more low-hanging fruit. You are able to pry away another, smaller piece of silver ore before your nerves give out. You nimbly descend to where Juno is waiting. Well done, she says. As you walk back through the dredge, their heads turn in unison to follow. The dread that lingers, and she's shaking in your hands, and the shaking in your hands does not subside you for hours. Strauss Whetstone, okay. You approach the gates of Borsgard again, relieved that you're still standing. That they're still standing. It looks like they took a beauty while you were gone. Alette rushes to your side and throws her arms around you, like once you've crept through the gates. Juno smiles at the reunion and tells you, take this time with your daughter, find a smith who can fashion an arrow from that silver, I have other things to do, which I must attend, but meet me on the walls when you are done. Alright, let's call it here, thank you for watching, catch you in the next one.